Hi, and welcome back to the shop. For the past year or so, I've been building a letterpress from scratch. In this episode, we're going to clean up a few more things, and then use the press to print a small run of cards. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to show you the results. Let's get into it. The first problem is one related to the ink disc mechanism. This mechanism is supposed to slowly advance the ink disc as impressions are made, but I made an error. I never firmly attach the ratchet piece to the shaft the disc rotates around. This makes for a real sloppy connection, and means that the ink disc can move on its own. Not good. So, to fix this, I'm going to add another key that will keep the ratchet and shaft lined up. It's the same process as before. I'll use the brooch to cut the inner side of the keyway, which given this is thin material, went a lot smoother than last time. Cutting the keyway on the shaft is done on the mill. One thing of note, this shaft has a shoulder on it, and I cut a slot into this shoulder so I could nest a key down into this geometry. Now, I need a pretty small key, and it just so happens I need to trim down this key from last episode, so I'll use the offcut. Here's what I was talking about with the nesting the key into the shoulder thing. Because of this, the key is below the level of the ratchet, which keeps it flush on top. Speaking of the ink disc, I never hooked up that automatic rotating mechanism. What I had originally envisioned was a chain that goes from this part of the letterpress, connecting up to the arm that actuates the rotating mechanism. I think the easiest way to attach the chain would be some sort of hole in this member. Nice, okay. I'll use a bit of wire to attach the chain. Here's the chain I'm going to use. It's pretty light duty stuff, but I'm hoping it'll suffice for this purpose. Let's get it attached to the press and test out the auto-rotating mechanism. Okay, that seems pretty good. There's one small issue still. The arm doesn't quite have enough spring force to return back to the default position. But a stiffer spring should solve that. Okay, next task. There's one remaining problem with the cam, and it's that the geometry of the cam won't quite cause the platen to turn on its own. I've been giving it a little push with my hand, but of course this is not ideal. Now, in a perfect world, I could get the cam shape exactly correct. But without some CNC equipment, I don't think I'm going to be able to get much better than what I have right now. So the next best solution. I need a small kick upwards just like I'm doing with my hand. This seems like the perfect job for a spring. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to mount the springs to the steel bar, and when the press gets to the base of its stroke, these springs will compress. Then, later in the stroke, they'll release their energy, providing that kick. Let's see how they work on the press. This next project is one I've known I've needed for a while. It's also one I keep getting called out on in the comments. 
I need something better as packing material on the platen. This cardstock I've been using has only just been barely adequate, and I have a feeling with real packing, the impressions the press makes are going to get worlds better. I'm going to add what are called tympan bales, basically a mechanism that will hold tympan and other packing materials to my platen. They look like elongated C-shaped bits of metal that affix the packing material the top and bottom of the platen. To add these is going to require some serious surgery on the press. I'm going to have to take the whole platen assembly out, which provides a lot of the core structure for the press. It means I'm going to lose a lot of the calibration I've done thus far, but, well, I don't really see any other way. Okay, with the platen out, let's get it onto the mill. I need to take off roughly 1 8 of an inch on each side of the platen to provide clearance for the tympan bales. Next, I'll drill some holes in the ends of the platen. These holes will provide a place for some pins to fit. They're going to be held in pretty well by the platen mechanism itself. So I'm just going to use some super glue to keep them in place for now. On these pins will sit the tympan bales, and those are next. They're made from 1 8 inch steel bar. I'll mark out all the important locations and then bend the bar and the vise. Here's sort of the idea. Once I've got the C-shape roughed out, I'll mark and drill the locations of the holes for the pins. And with that, the tympan bale should fit onto the platen. To lock a piece of material against the platen, I can lift the bales like this, slip the paper under them, and lower the bale to lock the paper into place. Okay, let's try sticking this assembly back into the press. Cool, now there's no excuse why I can't use better packing. There's a tool I'm going to need to adjust the press properly. It's called a roller setting gauge, and it's used to adjust the distance between the roller and the type. It's exactly 0.918 inches in diameter, type high. It's pulled up behind a roller to determine if it's the right distance away from the bed. I don't have one, and it seems like something that would be pretty easy to make. For this mini project, I really wanted to have some good materials. I splurged on some really nice machining steel, some 12L14, for the main piece. Let's get it onto the lathe and get into it. I'm going to begin by facing the material, as per the usual. For this project, I've pulled out the micrometer. This material is nearly exactly one inch in diameter, and as I slowly work my way down, I'll keep taking measurements until I'm right on the nose. Well, at the end, I'm about half a thou undersized, but I think that's fine for this application. Let's part off the material, and then I'll show you what's next. To attach this round bit to the handle, I need to drill and tap a small centered hole along the surface. And that's the end part. Now let's work on the handle. This is a bit easier. I'm just going to cut the steel bar to length. And then tap the end so that it fits into the mating hole on the other piece. I also opted to clean up the rod a little bit with some abrasives. 
But yeah, that's about it. A pretty simple project. And even better, now I can use it to set the roller depth on the letterpress. I started off using the gauge on its own to validate the depth of the bed. After spending way too much time trying to get it perfect everywhere, what I ended up realizing is that the left side of the bed is significantly higher than the right side. Actually, let's sync up the press and let me show you. Here's what it looks like on the left side, and here's the right. You can see just how different the width of these stripes actually are. The one on the left is much closer to what it should be. I've obviously got to fix this, but I think I'm going to wait until I tear down the press for painting. I need to get some shims in there, and I don't think I'm equipped to fix this without pulling the whole press apart again. For my first test run, I'll use this type I've had locked in the chase for a few months now. Next up, I get to add a bunch of packing to the press. I'm going to start with some matte board to make up some of the bulk, but I'm going to quickly move on to some thinner stuff. Now, the traditional material to use here would be red press board, but I've been having a really hard time finding that affordably. So, according to some letterpress forums online, some of the material these green file folders are made out of should work. Until I can acquire the right stuff, this will have to do. I'll trim these file folders down on the paper cutter. On top of the whole stack, I'll secure everything with some tympan. On top of the tympan, I'll affix my spot sheet. Let's take the first impression onto this sheet. Wow, that's pretty bad. But it's good enough for the immediate purpose. The spot sheet goes underneath the tympan, and this is what I'll use to adjust the make ready of the press. Speaking of make ready, let's see if I can add some material to all the low spots. Okay, a little better. This attempt I'll mark with a number. I repeated this sort of cycle until I got an impression that wasn't half bad. This took a few attempts. Here's what I ended up with. Nice. The last impression definitely isn't the best one out there, but especially as a beginner, I feel like it's passable. But we can go further. I'd like to get a feel for what a real print run will be like. So, I found a design for some wire gauge pins online, and tried my best to copy them with some wire and pliers. I think I got pretty close. I'm going to install these on the tympan so I can do a short run of this print. Yeah, feeding the paper works just like I'd expect. Tape will keep them from slipping around. Sweet! Well, though it's just some bogus characters, I think that's my first print job, complete. And, well, I went a little nuts. I've got three letterpress tasks left. First, I need to trim down the side plates. Now that I've finished up the geometry of them, I can get rid of a lot of these sharp edges. Second, I need to make a big flywheel to replace this handle and give this thing some inertia. That's going to be next episode. And lastly, I need to give this thing a coat of paint. But wow, I think the hardest part of this project is behind us. The press actually prints, and that's amazing. What do you think of the letterpress so far? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching! See you next time!